Hi, I'm the Urban Roger and I'm at School of Walk. I am pleased as punch to be here because I'm going to take you through a bunch of really popular and easy to cook dishes at home. Indian food, it's kind of my heritage and I love it. First up is butter chicken. Butter chicken is absolutely gorgeous. It's silky, it's smooth. It actually is a dish from the 1950s um, and it was developed so the story goes, in Delhi, at the famous Moti Mahal restaurant. So we're gonna get into how to make butter chicken, and the first thing that we need to do is we need to marinate our chicken. So we're gonna make a very, very simple marinade. So, what do we need? going to take about kind of five, six hundred grams of skinless diced thigh chicken. And the reason that we use um, thigh chicken or chicken thighs, uh, boneless diced uh, chicken thighs, is because they really carry, I think, probably more flavour because you get all of that flavour that comes off the bone. Uh, and it tastes super good as well uh, when you're using uh, chicken thighs with, with curry dishes. Now, to make our marinade, I'm going to add in probably around, I'm looking at about sort of 200, 300 grams of whole um, Greek yogurt. And the reason that I'm using the full fat Greek yogurt is because we, we don't want that yogurt and that marinade to separate once it gets hot and once it starts to cook. So you really need to use a whole Greek yogurt. And the reason that I use um, Greek yogurt as opposed to maybe a plain yogurt is because it adds just a little kind of texture of um, kind of sourness as well, because we're gonna have plenty of sweetness that we're gonna have to offset against when we get into using some of our tomatoes a little bit later on. So, in goes our yogurt. Now we're gonna get our hands a little bit dirty in a minute, so don't worry about uh, the chicken already being in the bowl, because you're gonna get your fingers and you get your hands uh, into all of that. Now to that, I'm gonna add a couple of teaspoons um, of red chilli powder. Now I know that you might be thinking, whoa, hang on a minute, that's a couple of teaspoons of red chilli powder, is that gonna just be super hot? Don't worry, because we've got the yogurt, it's gonna offset the heat of the chilli powder. So here we go. Two teaspoons, I'll go on a little bit of friendly measure there, goes into our yogurt. And the same, we want two teaspoons of paprika. What does the paprika do? It adds a layer of kind of smokiness as well that we're looking for uh, for this dish. So in with our paprika. And then to that, I'm gonna add, oh, I love this stuff. This is ground cumin powder. So I guess the thing with ground cumin powder is that it adds this kind of earthiness to it. It's a kind of like a, a toasty kind of note that you get with it. So in two teaspoons of our cumin powder. Oh. Now to all of that, we're gonna take the juice of one lemon. Squeezing in the juice of a lemon. I've already pre-rolled the lemon, and the reason for pre-rolling it is because it just loosens up all of the flesh of the lemon, and it means that we get enough juice out of it as well, okay. So what we have is we have the juice of our lemon, we also have two teaspoons of chili powder, a couple of teaspoons of paprika, a couple of teaspoons of uh, cumin powder as well, and about two, three hundred grams um, of whole Greek yogurt. And so to that, we add these things, all right? And we need to really get our fingers all up in that marinade. So what you want to end up with is a marinade that kind of looks like prized roses. That's the kind of colour you want to look for. A lovely kind of pinky kind of mix. Okay. Now, that's pretty much in there. Okay, so now that is going to go into our fridge for at least an hour. If you can do it for longer, ideally the night before 
even better because it just gives uh, the chicken more time to soak up all of those flavors. And what you'll end up with is not just a quicker cooking process, but you'll end up with far tender chicken. Okay, so that's gonna go into our fridge. What we're gonna do now is start to work on the base and the base sauce. Um, and I like to kind of think of this as kind of like the Indian trinity of cooking. It involves onions, garlic, and chili, or ginger actually, that's four, that's not even the trinity. But it certainly involves at least three of those. So what we're gonna do is in our pan, which is over kind of a medium high heat, I'm gonna add in about sort of two to three tablespoons of just veg oil. Um, and that's going to get up to heat fairly quickly. But what we're looking to do is get our masala base sorted. About one onion. And what we're looking to see is we're going to cook that onion until it's lovely and kind of tender. I'm going to add just a little bit more because we've got about, say, about kind of 600 grams or so um, of chicken. One. Two and three, roughly about three teaspoons of um, pre chopped, pre crushed garlic. And then I'm going to go in one, two teaspoons chili, already chopped. And ginger, I love ginger. Ginger is just, you know, it's, it's a fantastic ingredient because not only is it great in cooking and just adds this layer of citrus to your cooking. It's so good for you as well. It's like an antioxidant. Um, so I'm gonna take a really nice friendly measure. So that's just gonna cook off. And what we're looking for is we're looking for this to cook and soften. It will take probably about sort of eight to 10 minutes for it to just gently soften and become lovely and malleable. Oh, that smells amazing. I love kind of the freshness, the hit of the ginger. You've just got kind of the chilies doing their magic as well. And the thing about this butter chicken dish is that it's got to be lovely and silky. It's got to be smooth. It's not going to be an aggressive dish that kind of, you know, takes you through three or four rounds of um, battle with chilies and firepower. This is all about an aromatic dish. So our onions now have been softening, cooking away. And what you want is this lovely kind of opaque color. I don't really want them to be um, really, really brown. I just want them to have enough kind of flavor and texture without necessarily wanting that caramelization to take place. So to that, we're gonna bung in our spices. We have one teaspoon garam masala. Garam masala, essentially, it's toasted spices and they're really kind of warming flavors. What you have in there is you'll have um, cinnamon, you'll probably have a little bit of clove in there as well, some brown spices like um, uh, cumin seeds, so a little bit of earthiness in there as well. Um, and then you'll have some coriander seeds, so you'll get a little bit of freshness from the coriander seeds, toasted and then blitzed. Two teaspoons fenugreek powder. Okay, fenugreek powder, what is all that about? Fenugreek powder, it adds a little bit of sourness to our dish because, you know, the thing about cooking with spices and Indian dishes, you want balance. It's all about spice layering. That is all going to mix in with our onions. And we want to cook these off, these spices, for a good kind of two or three minutes because we don't want spices to necessarily be raw. Now, the the, the heat temperature, we're looking at about kind of a medium high uh, sort of temperature. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of salt as well. That's gonna accelerate our cooking process and it's gonna help the onions and the spices release all of their moisture content as well. So that's the other thing about salt. Yes, we need to be careful with salt measures, but salt actually, it has, it's an active ingredient. So not only does it help bring out flavor in dishes, but it also helps accelerate some of the cooking process and helps ingredients release some of their moisture. Now to it, 
going to take about three tablespoons of tomato puree. This is going to add a layer of kind of sweetness that we're also looking for. So what we have is a little bit of sourness from the yogurt in the marinade, a little bit of sourness from our fenugreek powder, warming tones as well uh, from our garam masala that's in there. And I'm going to just all of that, let all of that cook for a couple of minutes until everything starts to kind of make friends in the pan and it gives off its aroma. Okay, so um, our masala base has been cooking, all the ingredients have kind of married together. And what I've done is I've let it rest for a few minutes just to cool down because we want our sauce uh, to be lovely and smooth. So this is, rather than um, seeing all the onions and seeing all the ingredients, we're gonna blend it. So we're gonna pulse that in a blender. So what you have is you have a lovely kind of, almost slightly kind of thicker puree um, kind of look to it. And it smells just so amazing. It smells really heady. And what I get from that is the onions and the tomato and, and all of those ingredients just seem to amplify um, when you've blended it together. So again, over kind of a medium kind of high heat, um, I'm going to use a slightly deeper um, kind of pan here because we're going to be adding some stock and we're going to add our chicken to it. And that just add a touch of uh, oil into the pan. Again, just about a tablespoon of vegetable oil and into the pan. Oh, I love that sound. When ingredients just start to sizzle in the pan. I call it a happy pan. I added just a little bit of water um, into the mix when I was blending it, just simply just to help the blender a little bit along and the ingredients. You only need a touch, just a lot, enough just to give you this kind of texture. We're gonna take about uh, 300 ml of chicken stock. Now, as I say, I'm using a slightly deeper uh, pan. I'm, gonna use, I'm using a wok here um, for obvious reasons because we are at School of Wok. Um, but you can use a, a kind of a deeper stock pot or something along those lines. So now what you're seeing is a lovely kind of silky, look at that, I mean that is like silk in a pan. Now our chicken will be marinating for a little while. Like all good um, tutorials, I had some chicken marinating in the, in the fridge. But what you don't want to do is take the yogurt marinade straight from the fridge and then plonk it straight into a hot pan because yogurt and hot um, kind of ingredients just won't work, it will start to curdle. So what I did is I, I took the chicken out of the fridge the, from the yogurt marinade and <clears throat> set it on the side just for about kind of half an hour or so until it starts to get to room temperature. So with our room temperature marinade, what I'm going to do is just to make sure that the marinade doesn't start to split and curdle, I'll start to bring it up to the pan temperature by just adding a little bit of the stock liquid into our marinade. Because what that starts to do is brings up the marinade to our pan temperature, just gently. Now, I'm just gonna start to spoon in our marinated chicken. You can start to see some of the separation on the top of the pan there as the tomato and some of the spices are starting to yield off. Now here's a helpful thing when cooking with spices. I never quite know why chefs use whites when they're cooking with spices because it looks like a, a Jackson Pollock painting or something like that at the end. All of that is now including any of the reserve marinade, the excess marinade has gone into the pan. What we're looking to do is we'll start to see that cook over about the next sort of 15 minutes. I'm gonna leave it, I'm not gonna cover it up because I want some of that uh, liquid, excess liquid, just to kind of evaporate. So you know that this butter chicken is about ready. And the reason is, is because 
Not only has it been cooking for about sort of 15 minutes or so and the chicken still feels lovely and springy and but ready as well, is that if you look here, all along the surface of the dish, you'll start to see the colour of the spices, the chilli, the paprika, the garam masala, absolutely everything, all starting coming to the surface because they're yielding their spice oils. Just a little stir because this butter chicken is virtually there. Look at that. I mean, that is silk in a pan. So butter chicken wouldn't be complete, obviously, without a little bit of butter. So we're going to take just a couple of teaspoons of unsalted butter just to finish off the dish. There we go. And that's just going to give us just a lovely kind of warming kind of finish. Now, you can use ghee, for example, um, which is just like clarified butter, but I'm just using plain old English butter, unsalted. Let's just have a little taste of that. Out of this world, I love it. It's about time to plate up. Now, to finish the dish, just a few toasted almonds as well, just flaked over the top. What I'm going to do is just park our coriander just on the side. It just looks like a gorgeous, balanced plate of food. Butter chicken from the Urban Raja. Enjoy. My goodness, butter chicken. This one knocks it straight out of the park. This is the kind of dish that's going to win friends and influence people. Thanks for watching the video and hopefully you picked up some tasty tips on how to create delicious Indian cooking at home. Hop on to my channel for more recipes like this. It's urbanraja.com.